AI suddenly feels too real. And I don't mean that in some dramatic, sci-fi, end of the world kind of way. It's way quieter than that. It's more subtle. It's the kind of change you only notice once it's already settled in. You scroll, you watch a clip, you move on, and nothing in your head goes, wait, that's AI. There's no pause, no second thought, no mental red flag. It just blends into everything else. And that feeling is new. If you go back even a year, AI content had a very specific look and feel. You could tell almost instantly. Even people who weren't deep into tech could tell something was off. Motion felt strange, faces drifted a little, lighting behaved oddly, characters didn't really stay the same from one shot to the next. There were tells everywhere. And over time, people learned those tells. The internet basically built a kind of reality filter around AI content. That filter is starting to break. I saw a post on Instagram recently where someone wrote something like, have you noticed there's less AI content out there lately? And honestly, I understand why that thought exists. It really does feel quieter, less obvious, less in your face. But that conclusion goes in the wrong direction. There's actually more AI content than ever. The difference is that it got better. And right now, most people simply don't recognize it anymore. So did AI slow down? That's really not the question people should be asking. The question is, what actually changed? Because this shift didn't come from one big announcement or one huge launch. There wasn't a single model drop that suddenly flipped a switch. What we've been seeing instead is a steady stream of updates. New image models, new video models, small improvements landing every few weeks, slightly better motion here, slightly better faces there, a bit more stability overall. Nothing that screams this changes everything on its own, but enough that things quietly start stacking on top of each other. At the same time, the market itself changed too. Over the last year, AI subscription platforms and aggregators started popping up everywhere. One dashboard, access to a bunch of models, images, video, text, audio, all bundled together. And now, pretty much anyone can get access to decent AI tools, and that matters. Because once access becomes universal, raw quality differences, stop explaining why realism suddenly jumps this much. If everyone has roughly similar models, outputs shouldn't feel dramatically more believable. Yet here we are, which means the real shift happened somewhere else. It happened in production. For a long time, AI content felt artificial for a pretty simple reason. It was stitched together. You generate something in one tool, export it, move it somewhere else, animate it, tweak it, export again, fix something that broke, then suddenly realize the character doesn't look the same anymore. Every step added friction, and every bit of friction left visible marks. Your brain is extremely good at noticing those things. Once you start paying attention to the AI content that blends in best today, a pattern shows up almost immediately. It's rarely about the flashiest model. It's about continuity. Fewer handoffs, fewer breaks, fewer moments where the illusion falls apart. That's where tools built specifically for creators and production teams started to stand out. For us, one of those tools has been Higgsfield. We've been using Higgsfield in our videos for a while now, mostly because it fits how content actually gets produced in the real world. So when they reached out about a collaboration, the timing was honestly kind of funny because we were already planning to make a video about this whole shift anyway. They had just released a new feature called Cinema Studio, and after testing it a bit, it was pretty clear that it ties directly into why AI content suddenly feels different. And just as a quick side note, because it's genuinely interesting, Higgsfield is the first unicorn startup to come out of Kazakhstan. You don't hear that very often in AI. It also explains part of how they move. They've been scaling fast, staying relatively under the radar, and focusing way more on execution than on hype. Anyway, back to the point. One thing that becomes obvious once you work with AI content seriously is that aggregators are great for experimenting, but they start falling apart the moment you actually need output. When consistency matters, when formats matter, when speed matters, jumping between five different tools stops being fun very quickly. Higgsfield approaches this from a very different angle. It's clearly built around production. You have access to multiple image and video models, and they're updated all the time, but the focus isn't really on the model names. It's on how everything is wrapped into a single workflow that actually holds together. Even small details make a big difference here. Being able to properly choose generation resolution, having a large list of aspect ratios that actually match real use cases instead of forcing everything into one format. Some of these settings aren't even available on the original model platforms themselves. They sound boring on paper, but they're exactly the things that stop AI content from looking like a demo. Once you generate an image, you don't need to export it and jump somewhere else to animate it. You just extend it. Same environment, same context, same character. That alone removes a huge amount of the seams people are used to spotting. And this is where Cinema Studio really starts making sense. 
Cinema Studio is built around a very simple idea that feels obvious once you try it. You don't start with motion, you start with a frame. One intentional frame where you focus on composition, lighting, mood, and lens feel. You generate a strong master image first. That image becomes your anchor. From there, you turn it into video by extending the shot. You're not animating an image in the usual way, you're extending a moment in time, and that difference shows up immediately in the output. Motion feels grounded, perspective stays consistent, lighting behaves the way you expect it to. Cinema Studio gives you camera movement as intent. Push, pan, dolly, handheld, orbit, drone. You choose duration, you choose resolution, you generate multiple takes, and then you curate. It feels much closer to how real production works than to traditional AI prompting. Another reason this feels different comes down to optical logic. Cinema Studio uses camera and lens profiles inspired by real cinema gear. That anchors the look. Perspective behaves properly. Depth feels believable. The shots stop feeling floaty and disconnected. This is also where hyper-realism quietly enters the picture. Not the exaggerated kind. Just enough detail and consistency that your brain stops questioning what it's seeing. Consistency is the real unlock here. Higgsfield lets you save characters and reuse them across shots and angles without losing identity. This used to be one of the hardest problems in AI visuals. Faces would subtly shift, proportions would drift, expressions would reset. When that happens, your brain immediately flags it. When it doesn't happen, your brain relaxes. And once your brain relaxes, the content just works. Higgsfield runs on a credit-based subscription with a free tier, and right now the annual plans are discounted, bringing Pro down to about $17 a month, Ultimate to about $29, and Creator to roughly $149 per month. Credits cover image and video generations, with top-ups if needed. In practice, a lot of creators end up paying for multiple tools, something like Pika for generation and Runway for control, and that combined cost adds up quickly. Higgsfield keeps it simple by building character continuity and cinematic camera presets directly into one workflow. Now, let me show you how this works really quickly. You go to the character tab, you use the Soul ID character model, you upload at least 20 images of your character. If you're using a real person, that's fine. If you want to create an AI character, you can build a small data set in Nano Banana Pro using different angles. After uploading, there's a scale that shows how good your photos are. Once the images are solid and you have enough of them, you give the character a name and click Generate. The system creates the lore for your model automatically. Not that long ago, this kind of thing required complex setups like Comfy UI and Flux Lore training. Now it happens in a few minutes. Once that's done, you go to the Images tab. You select the Higgsfield Soul model. You select your character, you pick a preset, for example, an iPhone-style preset with a 9 by 16 aspect ratio, and you enter a prompt. Something simple, like a man in a yellow t-shirt climbing onto the roof of a skyscraper. A few seconds later, you get a clean, realistic image with the same face you asked for. It's surprisingly straightforward. There are also a lot of built-in presets that people actually use. UGC-style formats, face swaps, viral effects, trend-driven motion setups, including styles inspired by newer video models. These aren't gimmicks, they're patterns, and patterns are what make content feel familiar. On top of that, there's a community layer where people share their work, get inspiration, and see how others approach shots. That's how visual language spreads. That's how styles converge. And convergence is another reason AI content starts feeling normal instead of foreign. So when you zoom out and look at everything together, AI didn't suddenly jump forward in intelligence. The production layer matured, workflows got cleaner, continuity stopped breaking, and once continuity holds, the internet's reality filter loses its grip. Detection relied on visible flaws, on seams, on inconsistency. Those things are fading. Cinema Studio isn't the only reason this is happening, but it's a very clear signal of where things are heading. Away from random generation, toward deterministic workflows, away from novelty, toward invisibility. That's why AI suddenly feels too real. If you want to check out Cinema Studio yourself or watch the AI movie trailer they released, I'll leave links in the description. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.